welcome back to my channel twinkle twinkle little spatula if you are new here my name is Stacy and I am a working mom recently newly back to working I have two little girls a three-year-old and a one-year-old and then I also have a almost 14 year old just having a birthday right around the corner um, my husband works as a cement finisher and I work at the local grocery store deli and I really enjoy cooking, meal planning, uh, grocery shopping. That's okay. <laughs> but I like grocery hauls. So the shopping part um, is some work, right? Um, but the reason I decided to start making these videos is because I enjoy watching them so much and I just um, share the way I do it. And um, it's actually been a really fun uh, experiment over these last couple of months learning how to film, trying to learn how to edit, um, deciding on like how much marketing I want to do for my channel and all of those things. So I really enjoy learning new things and I hope you do too. So today as you can see is my first video using my new camera. You'll notice, hopefully you'll notice um, better sound quality as well as um, video quality in today's video and that's due to the investment in a new camera um, and I can link the video below where I show you which camera I'm now using so um, today what we're gonna be doing is talking about meal planning and how I make my grocery list and this is a process that I've been honing over these last I would say I got probably pretty serious about meal planning and grocery lists. Um, probably the year that we moved back from Greece and that was in the fall of 2013. So now we're in 2020. So I've been honing this the way that I do it now for about the last seven years. I've got it down to a pretty good science. Um, but that being said, seven years ago, I was a single mom with just one daughter in second grade. Um, so it was a lot less work than now as a wife and mother of three. So um, meal planning for a family of five is quite significantly different budget-wise, workload-wise, um, taking everybody in the family's like, preferences and tastes into consideration. It's um, quite a bit more work. So I'm trying to, and I'm still continuing to perfect this process but i wanted to share with you today how i am currently doing it so meal planning 101 with stacy i'm so glad you're here and stay tuned for my tips and tricks in meal planning okay let's get started the first thing i want to share with you is the importance of being wise and intentional about the time and the place that you choose to do your meal planning because it can really make a big difference refocusing your perspective so that you can bring joy to something that you have to do right i guess you don't have to meal plan and you don't have to make a grocery list i think my mom i don't think when she raised five kids i don't think she ever i don't remember her meal planning at all or making a grocery list i know to this day she still doesn't make a list um to go grocery shopping so you don't have to but you do have to go grocery shopping and you do have to make meals or at least learn how to feed your family in some way or yourself. It makes me feel good to be productive and that time for me is in the morning. So I always try um, to do this in the morning when my mind is clear and I don't have like the heaviness of the day's events weighing me down. And so for me, that's what works best. But I think the important thing to remember here is to just think what works best for you. I can remember being a really young woman in college and visiting my um, oldest sister who had already begun to start her family and had a number of young children. And um, I would visit her in the evenings and I can clearly, like vividly remember that she would be cozied up on her couch um, with her notebook making her grocery list. I don't know if she meal planned per se back then, um, but I do remember that she made a very like detailed grocery list. And so for her, that's what worked. For me, it's in the morning. Also, another thing that I know for me makes me feel good is to be sitting by a window. So I have a window right here. Um, I've been working on this area, um, like little nook of our kitchen more pleasing to be because this is where I find myself sitting a lot because it just gets so much natural light. 
um, the sun shines here all morning. It's really beautiful. Um, my neighbor has lilac bushes that are um, budding just outside. I cut some this morning and they smell really nice. So this is where I like to be. I suggest to you to just do some like thinking about when and where you should start your meal planning. Um, and then just to get into the practical steps of meal planning, my first tip, so tip number one, is to use pencil and paper. And I find that this is just super helpful. It, it like removes the temptation of checking your Facebook or texting somebody or looking something up um, and getting like distracted from the task at hand. So when you're just using a notebook and a pen, um, you stay more focused. And then once you have those items, you're going to want to write out however many days you are planning for, write the day and how many meals you need to be responsible for, for those days along with the date. So I will show you here. This is, this is my notebook. Um, even just buying something that you think is beautiful, that sparks a little bit of joy, that's great. So I have this beautiful notebook that makes me happy. And then I use blank pages because that's what works best for me. And I will show you here that so far I have all of the days with the date right below them and then each meal. So I'm planning for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for every single day. And for me, it works best to plan just one week at a time. That um, doesn't feel overwhelming to me, but it also, it's like I have enough space to store all of that food and um, I don't, I, I can like, that's about as much time as I can keep straight in my brain. So one week for me works the best. Um, this week we're starting with a Friday and I don't always do that, but um, the last time I meal planned, I stopped at Thursday. And so obviously then we begin on Friday. So I will begin for Friday, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so tip number one, use paper, a pen, and, um, Get your calendar down. Tip number two. What you wanna do next is fill in all of the important things happening on those days. So you wanna make a note of events for each day. I'm gonna take a break, I'm gonna do that, and then I'll show you what mine looks like. What I mean by events on your calendar is just anything that would impact what you are making for dinner or any other meal um, that day. So anything that you have going on in your life that's going to impact um, how much time you have in the kitchen. And so for me, I almost always, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, but I choose my meals dependent on how much time I have in the kitchen. All right, we're just taking a little pause here for lunch. The Children came back from their walk. So mom's filming will have to wait. Babies, do you want to say hi to everybody? Hi. Hi. Okay. Be good girls and eat your lunch, okay? Okay. Okay. So it's now like several hours later. Anyways, we'll get back to the steps. And um, the next step, we're on step three is to fill in any meals for like busy nights. So one of our go-to favorite meals is pork chops and then salad and then the like carbohydrate I'll swap out with something easy. So like sometimes it'll be tater tots or rice or um, french fries, um, a baked potato, like something super, super easy. And sometimes we don't do a carb at all. And then sometimes I swap out the pork chops for chicken, but since we just got our half a hog, we have a whole freezer full of pork. And so pork chops are delicious and um, we love them. So and one of my fallback recipes for getting it on the table quickly and something we all really enjoy eating is taco rice. I can link that recipe down below. I have um, made it on my channel before. So that's a fallback go-to very, like everybody's happy when I make that. Uh, Thursdays, previous to me, previously to me going back to work, I had reserved for leftovers slash feed yourself night. Um, and feed yourself means everybody like 
besides the babies obviously like we have to help them but it basically means you find something to eat and you eat when it's convenient for you we don't necessarily like sit down for a family dinner and before i went back to work um i was like making a full out dinner every night and so we always were having leftovers and that was a good way to make sure that those leftovers were being eaten was to actually schedule a leftovers day in the meal plan i guess my tip is like be honest with yourself what amount of time do you want to in full faith like put into feeding your family yes they have to eat yes you have to eat but you don't want to go crazy doing it so just be honest with yourself um so that's what i've done so then the next step we're on step four is um, you wanna make sure that you're marking all of your recipes by, I just star them on my meal plan that um, need to be printed. So if I'm trying a new recipe, I print those out, we have a printer, and then I just stick them all in a magnet on my fridge and that works really well for me because I know a lot of other people like, Maybe you save a link or you have cookbooks and you write down the cookbook page number of a new recipe that you want to try. But right now for me, it just works out best if I have it printed and I have them all in one place on my fridge. And then on that day when I need to try that new recipe, it's already there. And um, I'll show you later when I'm making my grocery list how it helps with that too. So as you're meal planning, you're marking down on your meal plan, hey, I need to print this like just like an asterisk or a like a star or maybe you highlight it or whatever um, and then tip number or step number five is to consult other pre-made lists for inspiration so something that I've been working on for about a year now is um, I have some Google documents that I have started I used to have it all out on paper and that worked really well for me for like three or four years um, and then every time I get a new notebook I'd have to rewrite my lists, my pre-made lists, and I just got annoyed with doing that. And so I was like, I'm just gonna type these up and then I have them always. And that has been so much help. Oh my gosh, I can't even describe. So I've um, tried a couple of different pre-made lists. I've tried like doing it by protein. So like, here's my beef recipe list. Here's my chicken recipe list. Here's my pasta recipe list. You know, here's my vegetarian meals. And um, that didn't work for me because I don't meal plan like that. I don't meal plan like we eat beef on Tuesdays and chicken on Wednesdays and pork on Thursdays. Like I don't do that. I meal plan on time. And so what has worked best for me is making lists on this is, um, I think I call them like quick and easy. Like I have a quick and easy recipe list or just like meal idea list. And then I have a yummy but time consuming list meaning like we really love this but it takes a lot of time so um when i'm filling out my meal plan and i fill in what meals i need for nights that were busy i just look right away to the quick and easy because i know that's all i have time for and then i get to a day that's wide open i know we're going to be home all day i know i'm going to have a lot of time and i'm like oh maybe that would be a good day to make one of those really yummy like recipes that you know like say home to you but you need a lot of time and you don't always have that and so i just go straight to that list then as you are filling in your dinners you want to consult your pre-made list now you're not if you've never done a pre-made list before you're gonna have to like start making that right and um i just my like suggestion to you is just start doing it maybe on your phone, maybe in notes, maybe Google Docs like I'm doing it, maybe on a piece of paper, um, just wherever. Start writing down um, lists. And I'm going to tell you like a little secret, okay? This all started when I first got married and I had, I literally had a list and it was secret. And I don't even know if Chad knows. I don't think he watches his videos anyway, so he might never know, but unless you tell him. <laughs> When I first got married, I had to start a list, literally things Chad likes, things Chad doesn't like. Because I had been cooking for so long just for me and Zaina, and Zaina's a super adventurous eater. She always has been. 
Um, it's never been a problem. I'm an adventurous eater. I, I always like jokingly refer to myself as a good eater um, because I, I quite literally love everything, like honestly. So I'm not picky, I'm like the absolute opposite of picky. And um, it was a harsh realization when I got married that um, my new husband was not a good eater and had a lot of what I would call like stumbling blocks to enjoying good food. And so um, to make dinner time less stressful for everybody, I had a list of things that he really enjoyed. Like I would literally, I would make a thing and then I would like ask him or like just um, like uh, observe if he liked it or not. And then I would go back to my list and I would like write it down. Like I'd be like taco rice, things Chad doesn't like. Ice cream, Chad does like. <laughs> and so um, it was just a learning thing um, as a new wife that was helpful for me. So it's evolved over these last four and a half years. Um, our meal times have also evolved and maybe I'll get into that in like another video about family dinners and how that's um, evolved <laughs> over our marriage. But anyways, that's the super secret um, birth of my pre-made dinner lists. <laughs> Um, and then just a little tip in here too, I think I already said it, but plan for days that you're going to eat out or plan for days um, that you're going to eat leftovers. So it's really helpful to put those in your meal plan so that you're not like overbuying, you're not overcooking, you're not over planning. Um, you know, because the reality is things don't always go as planned and you need to sometimes deviate from the plan. So it's nice to plan for flexibility if you can. Um, so I'm gonna just take a little break right here and I'm going to finish filling in all my dinners. I think I only have one more. So I just have to like think and consult my list and then I'll get right back to you. Okay, so I wanted to show you where I'm at. I filled in um, the last dinner. So I only had Tuesday left. That was my open day there on the 9th. And I know that I already have like almost all of the ingredients for this because I actually planned to make it this week and didn't get around to it. So I just rolled that over into next week and um, it is something that I would like to film for my channel if I can get to it. So that is Greek style cabbage rolls in lemon sauce. Um, and then I went from there to the next step, which is filling in the lunches. In addition, I also have starred the recipe that I need to look at when I'm cooking. So everything else I know how to make out of my head and I don't need a recipe, but the cabbage rolls and lemon sauce, I have only made maybe twice in my life <laughs> because they're a lot of work. And so I need to look at the recipe and although it's not printed out, I have it in my recipe box. Um, so I start that and I already actually got it out just to make sure that I had it and I'm going to put that in my um, little spot up on the fridge where I keep all my printed recipes. Very handy. Okay, you guys, I promise we're getting there. It feels like I've been doing this video for a really long time and maybe um, if you're still watching, you feel like you've been watching for a really long time and I should have been more concise. Um, and you know what? Maybe as I do these YouTube episodes and on my YouTube channel. Hopefully I'll get better. I'm, I'm trying you guys. Um, all right, we are on step seven, plan breakfasts. So that's another one um, for me that's really easy because I don't like breakfast. It's something that I really have to force myself to eat. Um, my kids, that's easy because they only have a couple of things that I like rotate in between. Zaina feeds herself. Um, Chad's a gas station breakfast person, so I don't have to plan for him. Um, he is perfectly most actually happy stopping at the gas station and eating his breakfasts. So I'm going to just very quickly jot down um, what I know I'll probably eat because I can make myself. I am trying to be a little bit healthier. Um, these days it's you guys the struggle is so real um i love food so much and um I'm getting older and it's hard to love food as much as i love food so much as i'm getting older if i don't want to buy new clothes in a bigger size every season <laughs> so 
the struggle is really real. Um, I'm going to try to come up with some healthy breakfast. So give me a minute. Okay, so the good news is I was able to think of something to have for breakfast this week. Um, I forgot that I, and I cannot believe I totally have not mentioned Pinterest at all. I have a few boards on Pinterest that I refer back to for ideas, um, sometimes for rec like recipes that I want to try or um, like recipes that have been tried and true. Um, I also have some boards up for healthy eating. So what I did was I consulted my um, healthy eating breakfast board and I was reminded, and I should know this, that one of the things I do like to eat when I'm trying to be super healthy is an oatmeal bake um, recipe that is actually my own. Um, I came across it on Facebook, but then like over the years have tweaked it to perfection, I would say. So that's what I filled in for my meal prep breakfasts for the days that I work. And then um, some of the other days, I, I can't see it really good here on this, what I'm looking at, but um, another healthy breakfast that I like to eat is avocado toast with tomato. So that's what I went with. And then my next step is filling out the grocery list, which is what I have here. And so then I wanted to show you guys this too. On the left is where I have my meal plan. And then I just make my grocery list right over on the right and that makes it super easy super handy this is a very small grocery list i mean you guys i usually have every single line filled in and then in between lines <laughs> so um i just want to give myself a little pat on the back for being realistic with my expectations on myself and um taking advantage of some of the conveniences that we can now afford to with me being back to work I'm just taking a few um, like heavy loads off of my plate um, in grocery shopping, meal prepping, um, feeding my family all around. Uh, I, I just, I feel really good about the choices that I'm making to make things easier on myself and still um, healthy and happy family. So um, not very many groceries this week. Another thing that's attributed that to that is that I have been building up our pantry and um, our meat freezer we bought a chest freezer recently and I've been slowly like adding things to it like the half of a hog and uh, meat when I find a good price so that's been super helpful too just knowing that I have that to go for and then shopping my pantry as I make my meal plan um, not over buying so that's what I've done here and then when I make the grocery list over here I always start in the um, on the left there, when you walk into the store, the first thing you see is the deli. So I put my deli things like right there. This week I'm only getting deli meat. And then right below that, you walk through the produce. So then I put my produce on there. And then right below that, you walk through the aisles of the store. I, I try to keep that list really short. Um, so I only have four things that I need in the middle aisles. Oh, five because then at the end of the middle aisles um, are those corn chips that I like. And then on the upper right, I always put my meat. This week I only need a whole chicken and actually I might not even need that because um, I'm, I recently put in an egg order from a local farmer and I'm trying to get an, a chicken order too. Um, she does some meat birds and, but those won't be ready yet, but I just sent her a message and I said, hey, do you have any in your freezer that you're willing to sell me? So I'm waiting to hear back from her before I head to the grocery store. Um, so I might not even need to buy that chicken. And then um, the dairy department is right here. Very few things frozen right underneath it. And then I always box off this little spot in the very bottom for items that I'm either not buying at my neighborhood grocery store, Super One, or non-food items. So these are things that I might have to stop at Target for, or this week I'm actually going to Whole Foods Co-op because I'll be buying those spices in the bulk spices section at Whole Foods. Um, and so I have to make a number of stops. So I guess uh, one step forward, a couple steps back this week. Small workload, small grocery list, but I have to make a number of stops to make it work. So <laughs> you win some, you lose some. 
Okay, so one last thing that I did wanna tell you, when you're making your grocery list, you wanna make sure that you don't forget anything. So you go off of your meal plan, you look at all the recipes that you have printed out, and then if you keep a shopping list anywhere, like some people maybe keep it on the fridge, um, we use our Google Home for replacement groceries that are needed. Um, whatever system your family uses, to make sure that you get the replacements of things that you run out of, like staple ingredients, make sure you add those to your grocery list. So like you're out of ketchup, you know, don't forget to put that on there. Um, like you saw on mine, I'm out of a couple of spices. That's not something I buy very often at all. And so the only way I remember that I'm out of those exact spices is to tell Google Home to remind me. And so then when I go to make my grocery list, I ask Google Home, hey, what's on my shopping list? And then I put it on there. So don't forget to add your replacements. Um, and then we are almost to the finish line. Step nine is to actually do the shopping. So my suggestion with that is to find a time um, and a place that you like going. So for me, I like to shop all by myself. For a while there, Chad tried to come to the grocery store with me because he also likes to shop. Um, and sometimes he would suggest that we bring the whole family, but uh, that just is too stressful for me. I need to think. I sometimes forget to put things on my grocery list. Um, I always get what's on my grocery list, but as I'm walking the aisles, maybe I remember, oh, that's right. You know, I mean, like, even though I've been honing this process for a long time, I make a lot of mistakes. So I like to be by myself. I like to go by myself. Um, I like to take my time. And since I moved, I've been trying to find a store that I'd like to shop at, and I think I found the perfect super one. So um, you go to the place that you like to shop, and if you need to make multiple stops, make sure that you budget your time well, that you have enough time to do that. And then my last like secret tip, and it's probably a no-brainer, don't go shopping on a bad weather day. Like, it's not fun. If it's raining out, or snowing out, or sleeting out, um, I just stay home and if we're out of something we just wait you know we have other things we can eat maybe we have to go off of our meal plan and fend for ourselves <laughs> because it is no fun loading and unloading groceries in bad weather so my secret tip is avoid that at all costs and last but not least step 10 put your groceries away and you want to try to be as organized and as neat as possible when you put them away so that your family knows where to find things and so do you. Um, and then my last, like just one thing I wanted to mention is it's been pretty helpful for me to have my meal plan posted for my family. And this little board up here is new. Um, I just got that at Hobby Lobby and when the stores read back opened up because I had just been keeping it you probably seen on my grocery hauls like this little teeny tiny right and white board that I put on my fridge and um, although that worked it wasn't beautiful and so when I saw this beautiful one at Hobby Lobby I was like yes I do think I need that and why it's nice to have the recipes or the meal plan posted um, it's nice to remind yourself if you need to take any meat out of the freezer like one of my sisters was saying that she without fail like forgets to take the meat out of the freezer on the daily um, so having your meal plan posted will help you to remember that like you wake up in the morning you go what am i doing tonight for dinner you look at your dinner plan and you take it out right away right or even the night before what's my plan for tomorrow you just easily check it's right there on the wall um, and then you're not like spending too much time like fretting over it. It's already, the work has already been done for you. Um, and then it's nice too for your family or those that read in your family. <laughs> we have a couple of littles here in our household that don't know how to read, of course. Um, but my husband and my daughter, they both know how to read. And if they want to know what's for dinner, they know where to look. Um, all right. 
That is it for today. I know this was a long video and if you are still watching, I want to thank you because you are a true fan and you are the reason that I am making these videos and I'm so glad that you're here. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please click to subscribe to my channel. I will um, would love to hear in the comments section like what you're up to, what you're planning for dinner and lunches, breakfast, whatever snack food um as you can see oh that just reminded me i don't write down snack food um so that's one of those things that when i'm at the grocery store i just get what's on sale so i'm a sale watcher i don't like read the flyer or anything i just read the sale signs as i walk the store so that's maybe one of the reasons i like to be by myself is because i need to know what's on sale so that i know what to buy for snacks all right truly this time that's it for today thanks have a great day